it's Junkman from VintageRock.com, and we are at NAMM 2019. And what I love about this convention is everywhere you walk, you run into an old friend, and I want run into an old friend over here, my good buddy, uh, drummer for Poison, and uh, this is Ricky Rocket. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. You're using that friend term loosely. I want well, you, to you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I'd hate to say enemies, but that would never happen. So. Yeah, well, good to see you, man. I'm doing good. Good. Yeah? We just got in the door a little bit ago. First thing, get the badge. Second thing, go to the bathroom. Right. So, exactly. And then do an interview. Sure. Well, there you go. That's I feel the honored. top three. I made the top three <laughs> list, dude. Yeah. Wow. A lot's happening in your life. A lot of changes, but a lot of really interesting things. Talk talk to us about Ricky Rock in 2019, man. You know, this this is a year where I'm probably not going to go out on the road. Poison's probably going to work next year. Mm -hmm. We worked last year. Um, I'm doing my vlog, which is on YouTube. Which the, the, you can just find it on Ricky Rock or Ricky, it, Ricky Rocket. Just find Ricky Rocket, okay. you know, YouTube, Ricky Rocket. Uh, it's called Rocket Vlog, because I vlog, duh. Um, and uh, so this is like, I think today I'm working on my 46th vlog. That's great. Yeah. So I'm doing that, having fun. It's mainly motorcycle centric. Uh -huh. uh, I do have some music, so that's what I'm doing here today. Cool. Talk to us about, you know what? Again, I know you've been in the motorsports for quite a while. You've been, this, you know, yeah, like your interests are always out there and they're always really cool things. Talk to us about a little bit about your, your, uh, your involvement in the motorcycle world. You know, I, I'm just a fan. You know, that's really what it comes down to. And so I've been calling myself the motorcycle evangelist because <laughs> everyone keeps saying that like motorcycling's on a decline and it has been for a few years. That with millennials, when they're not buying as many bikes and you know, that kind of stuff. But so I'm here to say, no, you gotta keep riding motorcycles because I don't want to like wake up one day and there will be like a rarity that somebody rides a motorcycle anymore. You know right. what I mean? I don't think that's gonna happen, but um, I, I'm just a fan. I, I think it's, I've been riding since I was a little kid, and I, I like so many bikes that I have like 10. I was gonna ask, how many yeah. do you got now? Yeah, I have like 10, and I only need one more. Ask me that next year. That's what they say, exactly. I'm up to 25 now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I just, uh, and so I talk, you know, in my vlog, I talk about safety gear and, uh, and and a lot of times just places to go. It's just a background. It's just, uh -huh. you know, it gets me to a destination and then to some other destination I didn't even know I wanted to go to. But somehow I'm there because I was on a bike instead of in a car. So that's kind of cool. You know. That's awesome. So that's what I've been doing, and I do it on the road too, which is the perfect place. I get to ride in every state in the union when I'm on tour with people I would ordinarily never get to ride with. Even if I was passing through, just riding around the country, I probably wouldn't be able to meet up with them. But it's because of poison and the motorcycle thing together that I'm able to like parlay those two things. Now, you bring in your own bike with you yeah. on the bus and doing that that way. Yeah, right? I got a trailer and I just pull it along with me. And sometimes I'll ride to the next gig. It depends on how close together the gigs are, you know. Unfortunately, we're not like Rush, where we have a day off between every yeah. show, but. And then you're not like Neil Peart, where you're following the bus I would on your bike. I you would know? love to do that, yeah, I, you know, great. but you gotta have space to do it, time. So what's happening with music for you these days? Talk to us about uh, you and Solo and Poison and whatever you got going on. Well, I got Devil City Angels, you know. Um, we've been inactive for a while, but Joel Kosha, the guitar player, who used to be with Collective Soul, by the way, is playing with me tonight at the NAMM Jam. Okay, so, so you're gonna be over at the big jam over here at yeah. the Hilton. Yep. which is, everybody is just dying to get in there. Literally, they're going to be later because there's going to be so many people crushed people to death. People get trampled on. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be like the Who concert again. Yeah, right. Hopefully not. So. What was that movie where there was the New York, all the weird spacecraft? I forget what it was. That's every day in New York. Yeah, man. I know, right? <laughs> My hometown. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so poison music, too. I mean, anything you know, like that? hopefully. I yeah. hope so. I'm always up for, for working and writing and recording with poison. Uh -huh. I mean, it's my baby. It's my life's work. So, yeah. you know, I'm always up for it. And uh, hopefully we'll get our shit together and go do it. Dude, the last time we spoke at NAMM, you had a booth with Rocket Drums. Um, talk to us about, you know, what, what's going on with your drums, what kind of kits you're playing, um, what's happening with, uh, with, the, with the Rocket Company. Well, what happened was uh, I got a world cancer, and uh, that shut me down for a year. And I had to shut the company down. We were already experiencing some issues because I had a couple guys that, you know, changed careers. And... Um, so I was having a little trouble in that way, but I could have pulled through. Uh, but without me steering the ship, uh, it just it couldn't work. So I had to close down. And when I popped my head back in, 
it's like the it just in two years the drum business has changed so much. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, it's really really hard to make good quality American stuff in America and make any money at it and support. I just I didn't want to support. 20 people. Right. I wanted to support like five people and five families. That's well, that's what I really yeah. liked about it is you had such a small crew that was working on this thing and it was all American parts, you know, yeah. That's and just quality, quality drums. I was just blown away by how, how good your drum quality was and, you know, and just how small of a company that you kept in. I really got to give you props yeah, for that. Yeah, so I went, I went back to DW because, you know, I've always been buying parts and working with them ever since I went with them back in the 80s. The best, man. Um, you know, John Goods, you know, to me, the Steve Jobs of drums, you know what I mean? Uh, so I keep a great relationship with those guys, so I'm going to go see them in a little bit. Health-wise, you look terrific, man. It looks like you. like you did the right things. I, I think so. I mean, I'm speaking tomorrow night, actually, at UCLA mm -hmm. for... Uh, a group that is advocating, you know, vaccines for HPV, which HPV was what caused my uh, my cancer, and it's like on the rise. Everybody has HPV, almost any everybody, you know. Which one causes cancer? Sometimes you, you don't know. There's no test for it yet. Right. So you just all of a sudden wake up one day and you're like, oh shit, I got cancer. You get tested, and it's like, yeah, that's HPV. The good news is, if it's HPV, you have a better chance of beating it, and I did, but. You know, I'm doing a campaign with a Head and Neck Cancer Alliance uh, that is an early detection thing uh, called Open Up and Say All. So it's trying to get people, if they have any problem at all with their throat, get into an ENT and get looked at. Don't let it go. I'm lucky. I can talk. I can eat. I can, you know. I, I have trouble sometimes, but I'm fine. Good. And a lot of people are not. They can't yeah. talk. They Their heads are, you know, I'm extremely lucky. So I want to make sure that nobody dies from this or goes through what I went through. And unfortunately, people will, but we want to slow it down to a snail's crawl. Well, I, I really applaud your efforts, man. It's awesome. So, Thank you. Again, um, enjoy NAM today. It's going to be a blast. Uh, have a good time tonight. You guys will see him over at the Hilton if you make it in there tonight. And uh, he's going to be rocking out. VintageRock.com. These guys know what's up. And he's a fellow East Coast guy, so you got to right off the bat. You so, Yins guys go over there, you know, uh, from <laughs> hey, the he's Pennsylvania. From the Berg right I know. There. He's from the Berg. I'm from yeah. New York. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah again. Hold it against you. <laughs> hey, it hey, happens every day. Sudden, we become Rams fans like overnight. Though. I know yeah. there was a, there was a great meme I saw online the other day with uh, with with Forrest Gump. It said, "And just like that, everybody loved the Rams." Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? So I went from I mean I love the I love the Steelers, of right? But I also like the Eagles. So it was like, okay, Steelers are out. Okay, Eagles. Oh no, the Eagles are out. Yeah. I don't like anybody. All right, I'll go for the Rams. <laughs> well, that's another day. So again. Um, just enjoy enjoy Nam, dude. Have yeah, a blast, absolutely. you know. It's, this is our where all our friends are. So you know, right on, brother. Long Thank time you for very you. Much again, Ricky Rocket and uh, Junkman here from VintageRock.com at Nam 2019.